another Selling and Crafting family. I'm Angela Wolf, and we are at your side virtually. So I hope you had a good weekend. Uh, judging by a lot of our weather, you got to start with that. I think a lot of us were really wet, and now we're really hot. <laughs> so my trench coat, which I wanted to finish for the weekend, which we are, Today we are going to be attaching the pockets. I'm gonna show you some tips for attaching the collar and the facing and top stitching. Top stitching is what makes your garment look fabulous or not. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna be doing today. And then tomorrow we will finish the trench coat by hemming it, attaching the belt loops and finishing the cute belt. So if you missed last week's show, you can go back and watch how I sewed together the sleeves. We'll be attaching those later, but for now, uh, if you've never been here before, say hi, say where you're from. Today we are garment sewing. So I see all of you rolling in. Hello, hello. And I hope you had a great weekend. It feels like a really long weekend. I mean, even though I'm still at work. But July 4th is coming. A great holiday. And I'm looking so forward to taking a few days off. I'm getting a little sun. So if as I go through here, by the way, I can't see all the comments as I'm doing the project behind me. So if you're asking questions and I miss them, make sure when I come back to take a break that you ask them again. So welcome Wolfpack. I see you all rolling in. So I am a Brother Brand Ambassador and we are live on Brother Sewing and Crafting Facebook and YouTube pages. And thank you for letting us take over your page. So are you ready to go? Why don't we start with the pockets? And I have everything laid out ready for you. I had to be really patient and not get started until you were joining me because a lot of you ask questions about this. So let's move on over. Okay. So some of the questions that you were all asking was how to mark your pockets. Now, I have, the pattern is always just a suggestion, remember? I mean, all of our bodies are different shapes. Maybe some of us are taller, shorter. So this is the pattern we're making, remember? And it has little pockets right here. Be really close, you can see that, okay? Now I changed mine, if you watch that episode, into being curved. And you go back and watch all of these episodes if you're new to the party. I still need to sew this on by hand, but for now, I'm just gonna attach the pockets. But usually, you would hand stitch that first, that little opening but I'm not gonna make you watch that, that's really boring. So here is my pattern and here is my jacket. You can see I've attached my facing. I'm just gonna open it up for now because we'll be sewing uh, top stitching and pressing that together. So here is my front seam and my side front seam. If you look at your pattern piece, there are little dots where your pocket is supposed to go. And the dots are according to color, which would be the color of your size. And this is very common on a lot of patterns. They'll have little notches or markings. Now, this isn't gonna totally match up here because I have seam allowances on this pattern that I've already sewn. So I kind of have to just, usually I mark this at the beginning and I probably did and I probably used iron away chalk. So I can't see it, it's gone. <laughs> So let me just uh, do the best I can at figuring this out, and I'll give you a few tips for marking this. You can use transfer. They have called what they call uh, transfer paper. You can use that. I just find it just as easy to use chalk. Okay, so that's pretty close. Just filling the center front seam. And once I pin it in place, I can double check and say, hey, do I like this or not? So I'm on the pink line. So I'm gonna go to the pink circle. I just hold my finger there, lift this up and give myself a little guide. And I can see the circle right there. If you give yourself an X, that's really easy to follow. All right, and then making sure this is nice and straight. There's the other pink circle. Let's give it a little marking and a marking. Now I made my pocket a little smaller, so it might not be totally perfect on here. And let's see what it looks like if I kind of use that as a guide. Again, if you're taller or shorter, you might want your pockets lower. You might want them higher. Uh, maybe you made bigger pockets, I don't know. So once this is hemmed, this looks like a pretty good placement if I do it kind of in the middle of that. Uh, do I want it on an angle a little bit so it kind of follows the angle of the jacket? Let me show you my blue jacket. Thank you. 
And by the way, if you hear that noise, <laughs> we're having a massive uh, thunderstorm. So if I lose you because of internet, let's hope not that that does not happen. And if you're wondering why I'm having a bad hair day, it's because I just ran in out of the rain. But if you hear thunder, <laughs> it's not your imagination. And I'm not playing music in the studio. It's what's going on behind me, above me, I should say. All right, so see this pocket here? This is the pocket that we're placing on our jacket. And I'll bring it over to the table so you can see it a little closer, okay? All right, yeah, that's Michigan. We have had some rain, that's for sure. All right, let me take you back over here so you can kind of compare. So this pocket, again, it is on the angle just like I had marked it here. You can see what it looks like. And this was a good pocket placement. It had enough room for my phone, enough from the bottom edge where the hem is going to be. And that's about exactly where I have it here. So I'm just gonna go with that. And this is just a little trick. If you give yourself a good chalk mark. Now, if you did this on the pattern, on the first piece before you sewed it together, it's much easier, much easier. But I didn't. So here's a little trick for you. Oh, I actually sewed this side already for you, so that might be a little trickier. If you line up your front piece, seam to seam, and you lay your fabric on top of this, and you can just rub over the chalk marks. So let me get the pocket out of there. and just rub over the chalk marks you have. And they will, see how they just kind of showed up over here? Now I can make them a little darker. Actually, I'm using clay chalk for this, just to make sure it comes off. I don't want to have a big mark. And then what I'll do is I'll go back and measure to make sure this is exact, but that's a great way to move your markings from one side to the other. So for this one here, you can see I have my double stitching double cover stitch on it for a little decoration. I actually, to finish my double cover stitch edges, I stitched off the edge and I'm just gonna tuck them underneath, in case you were wondering about that. All right, now you can spray with uh, like a 505 spray or something like that, which is not a brother product, but it's a spray adhesive, I should just say that. Any spray adhesive would work. Or, I don't usually like to use that on garments so much, so I will probably just use pins and pin this in place. And again, I'm just kind of centering it in between these marks. Put a pin in the top just to hold that secure, and I'm gonna put a pin right here so now I know my top edge is even. Now we're not gonna be stitching across this area, but I like to keep the pocket in place and that will secure it because you don't wanna pin over, sew over any pins. Now if I pin going from the inside here and around the edge, my needle will not hit these pins. Let me bring you just a wee bit closer so you can see that. go and notice how the lining is tucked under we've pressed it so the lining stays to the underside you'll you won't see that except as a little peek when you put your hands in your pocket okay so I have a pin in the middle to hold it in place, this one to hold it in place, a few throughout here just to keep it in place. I'm not a big pinner, <laughs> as you know that. But if I want this not to move, this gives me a little handle on as I'm stitching, just if I lift my foot up, I don't want anything to move out of, way, out of the way. So we're going to run a double, I'm gonna use a triple stitch along here. You could also use a blanket stitch. You could stitch it on by hand if you wanted to, but hey, we've got a great sewing machine. You gotta use a sewing machine, right? So let's go sew that.
All right, I'm headed to the sewing machine, but I see someone said that they like the rounded pockets better. I agree. I They're just something different, right? Um, and if you have any questions, just roll them through. In the meantime, I'll go back to sewing. You guys can chat along as I go sew. Here we go. Okay, doke. Get my pins out of here. All right, so line up. It's really important that your fabric lays flat. If you don't have a little extender for your machine to keep, give you a little more room for sewing, uh, just be really careful because if this is like falling off the edge of your machine in the back, sometimes it can skew your sewing a little bit. So just keep that in mind. So, you know, they have like little extender tables or if you have a table like this where you can just put your machine down inside of it and keeps everything really flat. Uh, depending on what machine you have, sometimes they come with that or you can buy the extension table extra. But it's really worth it when you're working on a project. Well, most projects actually, but this one in particular. So I'm gonna pick the triple stitch and I'll bring you over here. And just a weather update, it is lightning. So if I lose you, I promise I will come back and sew this with you. So for any reason we leave, I leave you. It's not on purpose. Okay. This is the triple stitch, if you've never seen that. It just goes back and forth. Those of you who have been with me for a long time, you know that this is my ever-loving stitch. I love it, I love it. And you're gonna change the stitch length to a little bit longer. And for the pocket, I'm gonna go with a 3.5. Why is that? Because when you go around curves, if for any reason uh, you have too long of a stitch or your stitch length is too long, when you get to this area here, it ends up looking like a, almost like a jagged edge instead of a nice curve. Another thing you can do is go with a longer stitch all the way through here. And then when you get to the curve, just lower it one notch. So if I have a, let's just say I was using a 4.0 all the way around. And when I got to here, I could change it to a 3.5. You'd think it would look different, it wouldn't, but it would really look nice. All right, so my needle here is in the left-hand position and I don't like that, so I'm gonna move it. It's just my preference. So I'm gonna move it to center. That's just where my brain works. I don't know, what about you guys? Do you like to have the needle in the far left position or the center or someplace else? Just curious. I And, and is it because it's how you can see the fabric or just because that's how you've always done it? That would be the question for the day. Do you like the needle in the middle position or the far left? Because most of the, a lot of the machines are automatically set to the far left. Okay, so where I'm putting my foot here is I, there's a notch on the inside of my foot, my um, foot here, and that's where I'm gonna use that as a guide. Now, if you notice, there's a hump right here. How am I gonna stitch up and over that? Well, I'm gonna go in just a little bit over it. Let me get this pin out of the way. I don't wanna sew over this pin. First of all, don't start off the edge because you're gonna just ask for trouble. So I'm gonna start a little bit in and I'm gonna press my little black, my little black pedal in, remember that? And now when that goes down, it will remain Totally level. I love that little trick, the little black foot, the little black, the black button. All right. And I'm just gonna go backwards, just a stay stitch here. All right. And you can see the black button popped out because now the, presser foot is level. Now you could even stitch a little closer to the edge if you want to. I am using this as a guide so it's more of a decorative top stitching. So it's decorative and it's attaching the pocket. If you're using a blanket stitch or something like that where you didn't want to see that stitch, then you would stitch right along the edge. All right, so I have this at a 4.0. I decided to do that to show you how this works. I just got to the curve, and now I'm gonna decrease my length to 3.5. I'm gonna leave my pin in for now because it's not in the way. Make sure you guys can see this okay. So 
So are any of you working on your Chloe trenches still? Have you finished? I've seen a few of them show up in the Angel of Patterns group and they're gorgeous. And as you go around the curve, you know, you can lift your presser foot, make sure it's nice and flat. You just don't want to have any sharp turns as you do this. And I looked and I believe it's going to be 70 this weekend. It's going to be perfect to wear my jacket. For those of you that are new to the party, this is sewn out of a Ponte knit. I also have one that's sewn out of a cashmere because I've worn it for winter. And then I have that nice little linen one that you saw, the blue one. That's for spring and summer as well. All right. Guess what I forgot to do? Oh, I forgot to change it back to a 4.0 for the sides. So guess what? There's no way I'm ripping those out. This is what you call an opportunity for a fashion design. So <laughs> what we're going to have is a 4.0 stitch down the entire side of the pocket. Then when we get to the curve, it's a 3.5 all the way across the bottom part. And as soon as I get to the other side of that curve, I'll go back to a 4.0. So it will look like I meant to do that. That's how you solve it. No seam ripper for me today. I should have a little bell that you all can ring to me and say, wait, wait, you forgot. All right, so now we're, we're already at 3.5, so let's go around the edges. That was really, that's what I get for doing this live. But it gives you an example that if you're pay on the phone, you're watching TV and you're like, oh, I forgot to do that. See, it's not the end of the world. It's a design opportunity. Now, when you're going around these curves, you might want to lower your speed. I'm just pressing on my pedal a little bit, uh, not quite as far, just to make it go a little slower. But you also have your speed control, assuming most of your machines do. Not all, but most do. I think I saw one stitch there go a little bit wonky. Uh, hopefully not. All right, it's looking really nice though. So now I'm gonna change it to a 4.0. Thank you for the reminder. And now for the rest of the way up, I'll do the 4.0. I do, I see one itsy bitsy stitch on here that unless you were right sitting on my lap, you would not notice it. So I'm gonna leave it, but I do see one stitch that isn't perfect. All right, let's get to the top. I'll remove this pin. Making sure everything's laying nice and flat. Okay, one, two, three, and now let's do a stay stitch. Now, typically, just having a straight stitch or even the triple stitch is not enough to keep these corners in place because usually you're reaching your hand in and out all the time. So let me just remove my pins and we're gonna do, you have a choice. You could do a, a decorative stitch to, to secure these or uh, you've seen like little stitches across the top. I'm gonna do a zigzag stitch this way because I don't wanna lose any of the opening on my pocket, but like on jeans, you'll have a zigzag stitch that maybe goes this way just across the edge to secure that. So you could use a decorative stitch, whatever you want, but I will pick a zigzag and Let's see, I wanna see what, this is a very cool, now I'm on the Brother Luminaire, so those of you that have a machine like this, you can hit, let me just show you a little trick here. Don't get seasick. Actually, I'll bring you a little closer because I think you're not gonna be able to see this. There, that's better. So when I'm auditioning my stitch, I can click on the zigzag stitch and then click the projector. And what that will do is it will show me what that's gonna look like over here. All right, come on over. And if you have the dream machine or some of those machines, you have the camera feature, 
which you can hit the camera and it'll show you right on the screen what it's gonna look like too. So there's a lot of options here. All right, so here is all of my choices. And okay, I can see what that zigzag is gonna look like right on my fabric. See that? And if I want it to be a different color, let me see if red shows up better. Nope, it's fine. There we go. Yellow is pretty good. So you can see that stitch right there, right? This is my actual stitching, so don't get confused. If I don't like that, or maybe I think, you know what? That's pretty far apart, so I can change it right here if I want it to be a little bit narrower. And as I do that, can you see that zigzag changing? And now look at that, it looks like a bar tack. I'll leave it over here so you can see it a little bit better. Isn't that cool? And that would look really nice on here. Now, let's just say you're using a decorative stitch or something. Well, I can actually change the stitches right here. I don't even have to touch the screen. And now look, it gives me three options. Or keep moving. There's a wider. And these are all the stitches that are on your screen. It's basically just scrolling through those. There's your blanket stitch or a stitch that you could use to attach the pocket. You can see how the stitches um, on the edge would be right on along the edge. And then this little where it goes in and out would just capture the edge of your pocket. That's a great stitch if you have a tweed. It's not so good for a knit. Oh, this stitch might look pretty cool on there as a decorative stitch. Actually, that would have been kind of cool all the way around the pocket. Well, there's that's technically more of a blanket stitch. I call that a feather stitch. I never have the correct names, so if you don't ever uh, quote me on any of these, I named them myself, right, of what I like to use. That's technically a blanket stitch. I think that last one was your blind hem stitch, but um, that works good too. Okay. Hmm. You know, I think I just like the good old fashioned zigzag stitch. So let me go back. Yeah, this stitch here, that's your blind hem stitch. All right, let's click set and make it a little narrower. So it, the narrower you go, the more it looks like a bar tack, right? And I can make it just a little wider. There, I think that will look nice. It'll just cover, maybe not quite that wide. There we go. Now, do you wanna stitch from this end out or from this end over? Well, really, I'm going to stitch this way from the thicker part of the pocket to the end. Why? Because my foot is going to be level right here on the pocket. And when I get to the edge, if for any reason I get any wonky stitches at the end, which we won't, but if you do, uh, you don't have to worry about that. But if you start here and for any reason your black button wasn't pushed in or you don't have a level stitch, it might not look as good. So I'm gonna start from, uh, let me close this screen real quick. I'm gonna start right from that cover stitch and go up. And that will make it look more of a decorative stitch versus, or you know, like it. it's obviously for a purpose to keep my pockets in place, but it also at the same time, it will look nice on here. Do one little stay stitch just to make sure that your stitches don't come out. And I'm just using my previous stitch line as a guide I'm just centering my new stitch there. And give yourself a good stay stitch. Doesn't that look cute? Let me bring this out just a little bit so you can see it. Not bad. All right, now let's go over to this side. Again, just gonna center. I'm using the center of my foot as a guide right along my previous stitch line. Do a stay stitch. Mm -hmm. 
All right. What do you think? I think it looks fantastic. And so now it will take a lot of wear and tear every time I put my pocket or my phone in here. And this is um, clay chalk, so I can just brush it off. Fabric to fabric. All right, so let's take a look. Now, I will do the same thing for the other pocket. I won't do it live, but you got the idea, right? Uh, give this a good pressing. Now, let's go take a look at the collar and the facing. I've already started some of that for you, but uh, let me show you how this works. But first, I'll come and double check that you don't have any questions. Pocket looked good, didn't it? I like this. This is going to be so cute. And I see the end in sight. <laughs> Actually, there was a couple times I almost just sewed the jacket because I had some time and I said, I can't do that because then you won't learn anything. So here's the pocket. I'll give it a nice pressing. It'll get rid of all those little wrinkles and it's good to go. Now, by the way, uh, if you did not pre-shrink your fabric and you're using a cotton for your lining and the Ponte knit, your cotton could shrink if you wash this. So make sure your fabric was pre-shrunk before you did that. All right. So let me just see. Oh, hey, Carol, welcome to Brother Sews. Thanks, Star. Any questions, everyone? Yeah, Arnell, it's a great idea because if you ever had pockets, even on my jeans, my back pocket sometimes will just start to come off. And you could use rivets, but I don't want to use rivets on this. Awesome. Oh, thanks, Lysandra. Hey, Josie, you don't have, uh, the Stellaire is an awesome machine. You don't have the um, projector, but you have ways to see your stitches. So, um, and you know what? I can pull out my Stellaire later and show you what button it is. But it's a little bit different. It doesn't have the exact projector, but you have an awesome machine, so congratulations. Hey, Susie. Okay, I guess that's it. No more questions. Let's move on to, oh, here, Josie. Uh, if I use a knit, is there an interfacing that I may use to give it more body? You know, um, if you use a knit, like I used interfacing on this. This is a knit, a Ponte knit. And I only use interfacing on the facing pieces and the collar. Um, that's pretty much it because I want it to drape nicely. So you can use interfacing um, it, depending on what you use. I use number 3080 from the interfacing I have. It's like a French fuse. So it'll give it a very soft drape. So interfacing actually gives it a little more structure versus giving it drape, if that makes sense. Now, if you have a really slinky knit, uh, then it could totally change the hand of your fabric. Just test it first, because sometimes they can be um, they can cause problems. Uh, interfacing for reinforcement. I did not use interfacing on these pockets, but you could have. You could have. Uh, in fact, I believe on my blue one, I used interfacing. It really depends on the fabric. If I was using a tweed, which is a really loose weave, I would use interfacing on the pocket, but I did not on this one. So great question, Kathleen. Thanks, Lorraine. Oh, you're welcome, Josie. Oh, thanks, Pat. Remember this shirt? We made this in Fashion Sewing Club last year. All right, I think I got everybody's questions. Let's go back over to the table and talk about facing and collar, and I'll see you there. Okay. Get my pattern out of the way. So you can see this is my center front and this is my front facing. Let me bring the camera out a little bit so you can see the whole piece. Wrong way. <laughs> there you go. And again, on this side, I have my center front and my front facing. Both have interfacing here. Now, I've already sewn a few things because I didn't really think you needed to watch all of that, but hopefully I didn't skip ahead too far. So I sewed the collar. And you can see my seam going around that we actually, I actually did this in the Fashion Sewing Club because I was trying to get a few other things done on this jacket. So... The collar, you have your front collar piece. What is that? 
Looks like I got just a little bit of interfacing on my collar. I'll give it a little steam, it'll come off. I just don't want to damage the fabric. Thankfully, my hair will cover that up. <laughs> the back is two pieces. So I sewed it together with right sides together and put it out or <laughs> turned it out. The points look great. Here's the back, right? So I attached the collar first with just a basting stitch. Then I have my facing piece here and I already sewed together my shoulders on my facing. I've already attached the bias binding, which we did that last time. And as you can see here, I attach the facing all the way across the top. So my collar is in there. So there's a lot of layers when you get to like the area where your shoulder seams are. You've got bias binding, you've got uh, the collar, you've got a lot going on right there. But I usually stitch from one end all the way to the other. And then from the top edge all the way down. And then one last thing, which I did it on one side just to show you what it looks like. On this, this side here, I stitched from one end all the way to the end. And I had already pressed my hem up, remember? So I used my hem as a guide. And if you look really closely here, I stitched the facing. After I stitched down here, I stitched the facing from here all the way to the end. And if you look really close, my stitch line is just below my press line. Why? Because this fabric's a little thicker. And once I turn this right side out, the hem will actually match up beautifully. So stitch just a little bit below your press line. Okay, so in order to make your facing look nice, you're gonna give it a good pressing, but first I'm gonna, I'm going to just give it a trimming here. A little haircut. And I'm going to trim, so you have to imagine when your facing folds to the right side, you have two layers of fabric here, right? And you don't wanna see all of this fabric. So I, we're gonna do what we call grading this a little bit. And I'm just gonna trim it with my scissors on an angle. You could trim down to like an eighth of an inch or something like that. If you have really thick fabric, then you might wanna go ahead and just trim one side and then trim the other one a little shorter. But if you put your scissors on an angle, that will do the trick, especially if you're using these monsters. Now, don't do this part too quickly because if your scissors slide or move, uh, you could actually cut into your fabric and then you will not be a happy camper. <laughs> I'm loving all the sound effects from the thunder. I feel like we're in a music video or something. All right, now we're getting around the curves. Now here you do something a little bit different. Uh, you're still gonna cut these seams a little bit different in width. And then when you get to the curves, this curve here isn't too bad, but the back shoulder is. And I just give myself little snips, it's like taking, I'll bring you in just a little bit so you can see this. You really need some sharp scissors to be able to do this, by the way. And then I snipped that way. Now I'm going to go back and snip this way because you're basically taking little triangles out of this. There's a lot of fabric in this back with the collar and everything, by the way. These are, yes, these are my Angela Wolf scissors. These are the 7280s. This is not a brother product though, this is mine.
but they're pretty sharp. And whatever you do, just make sure that your tip is sharp. If not, when you go to do this, you can accidentally cut in too far and there goes your whole collar. So here's my collar edge. See how it has a nice, looks like, um, I don't know, lettuce? <laughs> um, no, not really. I'm not that hungry. But it does have a little different look to it. All right, let's go around the front edge here. And this part here is a curve as well. So if you have, if your fabric's really thick, you might have to do a few clips right through there. But if not, just go ahead and trim. Make sure I'm doing this the right way. Yeah. Whichever way you angle your scissors, that side will be a little bit less. And I flipped the jacket around, so I just had to make sure I was doing this the right way. So the facing side is the one that's a little bit shorter. Does that make sense? All right, I'm just, I know the camera's angled in, but you'll get the scissors here in just a second. Now, when I used to make tailored jackets, if I were going to, um, like a lot of times those, I made those out of wool or uh, lightweight tweed, cashmere, things like that, I would actually take the time to cut the facing layer first and then the outer layer. Just because number one, that jacket is very expensive and it just gives you a little bit more uh, accuracy. All right, when I get to the point, I'm just going to trim that off just a little bit. The other point looks good. Now, what about that hem that I showed you where I sewed? So you can see my pressed up hem edge here. There's my facing. So this gets a little bit of a different haircut. Just trim. I'm trimming off my hem and my facing here. I already started to trim and I stopped because I knew you'd want to see this. So in your jacket, both of these would be the same length. All right, and about maybe two inches in from your seam, just angle this down. So you can see what that looks like here. And then, but continue cutting off your facing. So now there's my hem edge. And then here's my facing edge. Now I'm gonna go, uh, tomorrow is when we're gonna be doing the hemming and last the last little details. So I'm going to need to add a bias tape to my hem edge down here before I actually go to hem this. But just to give you an idea, once this presses to the inside, I haven't even pressed this yet. And what not that a beautiful finish for your hem? And that's what that looks like. So let's go to the iron because the next step is to press this before we can do, do our final, final top stitching. And I think there should be time to do everything where our hour is almost up, but not, not quite yet. All right, to the iron. Hi, hey, Josie, that's your question. You know, you could use ductile scissors, but you know, that's not going to make one end shorter than the other. I had my scissors curved to the side, um, so that's why. I would not use ductile scissors for this project. Okay, so I showed this, and I can't remember if this was on the Fashion Sewing Club when we did it or on one of the videos, but this is a pressing board. You really want to give, you need to press your facing. And I like to press my seam open first. And I could use this board here. I could also use a sleeve board, whichever one uh, you, you prefer is your choice. I'm actually gonna go this way. So the pressing board underneath does very similar to my clapper, so it helps to secure that seam open. Once I do this, I'm going to be pressing it closed, of course, but you press it open first and then you press it closed.
Now, I, by the way, I'm now I can read your comments while I'm pressing. Um, I saw some of you say you got a new machine. Congratulations. And don't forget, if you go to Brother So's YouTube page, there's a gazillion videos on there. Well, not literally. Don't take that literally. But there's a lot. <laughs> and you can go back and rewatch any of them. And there's some, you know, that might be, if you look up your exact machine name, you can find those. Or you can go back and watch old um, At Your Side Virtually episodes and scroll until you find your machine. I know there's a lot from the Stellaire. And actually, Josie, I think you, a couple of you said you have this Delaire on my Facebook page um, last year, I think. I was doing Feature Friday where I did, showed a new feature on the Delaire every Friday. So if you go to my Angelova Facebook page and go on the videos, you'll see a lot of features on there. All right. That's the noise of the iron, by the way. That's not my stomach. <laughs> Told you this show has been a very entertaining uh Noisy show, I should say, right? All right? I'm flipping it around this way so I can get to the point. Now, there's a lot of fabric in there, so it's a little tricky to press that open, but at least I can get it a good pressing. Now, sometimes on jackets like this for the lapel, you'll have twill tape in a certain area to help it to open, but that's not the style of this jacket. So if you're wondering, what are you going to add the twill tape to the spacing? That's not on this jacket. Now, if you have on a tailor jacket, a, like a real tailor jacket, uh, a tweed, sometimes I will actually add twill tape to this seam. Uh, but for this fabric, I'm not worried about it because this is more of a casual look and you, it really depends on the fabric. All right, and lastly, the hem. Okay, so once you've pressed all of the seams open, now you're gonna press them closed. <laughs> you're probably like, why did you waste your time doing that? Well, because it really gives your jacket a much more professional look when you're finished. Okay, so this is the back side, and you can see, this is the hem that I pressed up what, weeks ago, and because I used the tailored clapper, it's in the, it still has that beautiful crease. Looks nice, and now. So as you're pressing, now here's the trick, on your facing. So when you're wearing the jacket, basically from where your waist level, where the belt is gonna go in, you're facing, you want to go towards the inside of your jacket. So let's give this a good pressing. And then from the waist up through the rest of your lapel, I'm just going to finger press this open right now. You have to imagine that this is going to open on the body. So if this is your, if you're wearing the jacket, from the waist down, you want the facing to be tucked under. And then from the lapel, that's going to open up. So then I want the facing to go the other direction because I don't want my facing sticking out when my collar and all this is open. Does that make sense? So wherever your waist is, make sure the facing goes that way. And then from this point up, you're gonna press it with your facing you, where you see the seam on the back here. Does that make sense? That's more of an advanced technique, but from the waist up, I'm gonna press and make sure that my seam shows on the right side of the jacket. From the waist down, 
the seam does not show on the right side of the jacket. Does that make sense? And it's not a lot, it's just a little bit. You could do understitching along here if you wanted that to stay, and I can do understitching on the other side if I wanted that. But again, those are more advanced techniques, and this is just a knit fabric. So I'm going to be doing top stitching. I'm not going to worry about the understitching. All right, now we are to the facing and to the collar, and it looks good. Just make sure your points look good. If you have to re-sew something, you can do that. Well, I kind of like these points. They look good. Now my knit is very uh, flexible. You, you know, the interfacing I'm using is a very soft, like a French fuse. So it's not, it's going to move a lot. So just make sure that your points aren't sticking out too much or the curves don't match. Once you top stitch it, you're done. Now you can just see, barely see my basting stitch right here, which I can pull that out later because remember I told you I basted my collar in. All right, that looks nice. And now let's go to the other side here. So from the collar down. The facing goes towards the right side of the garment. This is the, and now from the waist down, I want the seam to roll towards the back side of the fabric. All right, and let's make sure that our Hem is pressed up so we know where to sew that. Now I'm eyeballing this, but let me go back to the table and show you just a couple tricks here. In case you're new to this. Do you have any questions before I go to the table? <laughs> Josie, I do have four jacket classes on pattern review. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Kathleen, would you pref would you use a press cloth also? Okay, so Kathleen, great question. Now, I did not mention this before, but my iron has an iron shoe, meaning I can press on anything. But I'm so glad you asked this because if you do not have an iron shoe, you're going to need a press cloth. You would need a press cloth on anything, actually, because you wouldn't want to have an iron mark on your fabric. But I'm using an iron shoe, which protects your iron or your fabric from everything. I, if they're not very expensive, uh, you can check your brother dealer. They might carry one uh, or just do an Internet search. But they're not very expensive. They just go on the bottom of your iron. Mine came with that. But you can also buy one, just inexpensive ones, to go over any iron. You just have to look at what brand you have to make sure it matches. All right, so I just want to give you guys a few more tips. And our hour is just about up, but let's go to the table. Let me show you one of the biggest problems when sewing your facing. And actually, I can start right here. So I'll take your little comment down there. One of the biggest problems when you're sewing your facing and your collar. And I hear this a lot from beginners. And before you start doing your top stitching, try your jacket on. Isn't this looking fabulous? Oh, love it. It's my collar. Now this has a much wider collar. That's the style of the jacket. So you can see the back side. There's my flap. There's my collar. 
you do want to try these the jacket on every once in a while just to you know check how it's hanging what does it look like did you make any really big mistakes <laughs> like put your sleeves on backwards stuff like that something that could be rummified if you catch it soon enough all right so you can see now when i was talking about having my edge here my seam edge roll towards the back that's because now you can't see it right but then when you get down to the bottom of your roll or where your where your tie is going to go then i want this i don't want to see that seam so that's why i said the facing kind of push the seam this way towards the front and then underneath does that make sense now now one thing you want to check is after you have this now we'll go to the table because i think you'll see it easier there Take your jacket, so here's one side, and here's the other, and compare that where your collar is to the end of your lapel is even. Because you might have sewn, maybe the fabric got squirrely on you, and if you have one side, I'm just gonna make this up, okay? Let's just say when you put this on, that one collar is like an inch off. That's gonna be so obvious so make sure that from your collar to the point of your lapel and your collar to your collar, make sure that all of that is equal. The other thing you want to check, and this is why I said that, because I was eyeballing my hem. Once you have your facing sewn on, start at the collar and kind of ease that fabric down, just hold it in place. And when you get to the bottom edge, if this was my hem, would that, no. See how it's off by about, um, gosh, almost a quarter of an inch. And I thought when I was pressing, I thought that looks like an awful lot. But I did that on purpose just to show you. So what I will do is press that a little bit lower because you want to make sure that your hems are exactly the same length as well. So they should match up just like this. And that way you know the length of your facing is the same and your collar. So the last tip I'm going to give you, and then I'm not going to top stitch this with you, but I'm going to give you the tip for it. And let me just grab my chalk. I top stitch from the right side of the garment, but if the right side is going to be this under layer that folds back, that's the side I would top stitch from. Does that make sense? So this is the side that's going to be facing your jacket. So that's the side I'm going to top stitch from. I'm going to probably use the triple stitch. I don't know, I might go look and see if there's any decorative stitches, but when it comes to sewing the points, I think you can see that, okay. I give myself a guide. Here, just draw yourself a chalk mark right from the point in. And when you stitch, and let me bring you just a wee bit closer. Okay. So as I'm stitching, I'm going to go around my collar, give myself a guide right there. Why do I do these points? Because when you're stitching, when you get to that chalk mark, that means that is where you need to turn and go the other way. But you can't just stitch all the way to the end. You want to have your stitch has to be equal, right? Now, when you get to this corner here, what do you do? Well, there's a lot of options, but I usually will stitch all the way down. You see my chalk marks okay? I stitch all the way down. My needle goes down right into that seam. I turn. I stitch to the end. So you can't even see that seam, right? Because it's right in your seam allowance. You stitch to the end, and then you stitch to here. So I go down, down, down. It's like a little box. And then stitch down to this end. So you end up with what I call like the little square. Here. And I think, let me bring my other jacket up for you to see on the ironing board so you can see one that's finished. If you look really close here, I'll bring you in. You can see I stitched the corner. Oops, here you go. Down along that edge right here so you can't even see those stitches and then right to the end and then go down 
in here. And it looks like a box. So if you get confused, just chalk it in so you can follow that. All right. And we are right on schedule. <laughs> like, that was the fastest jacket ever, right? So I'm going to go ahead and top stitch. And then tomorrow, um, tomorrow on my page, the Angel Wolf page, which will be shared on the Brother page, we're going to try to finish up this jacket. We're going to insert the sleeves and do the hem. Pretty much after that is just the belt. If I can't finish it all tomorrow, I might do a little bit before then so you don't have to watch everything. But I know some of you love to watch so you can learn. So I tried really hard to not do it without you on live with me. So, <laughs> yes. Any questions for me before I go? Oh, yes, Josie. Thank you for signing up for those classes. I do have a zipper class on there. I actually have two new classes that you might, some of you, especially if you're beginners, uh, in July, they're going to be virtual classes. Uh, I just put them up on my website, AngelaWolf.com, and one is all about hems. But it's actually not about all hems. It's about choosing the right hem to hem your pants or capris. So teaching the blind stitch, the double rolled hem, when to use which one, some tips for making it look really professional. Uh, that class is coming up in July. And then also at the end of July is another class on a really cool hem. I don't have a photo of it yet, so I have to, I'll describe it to you and I, I have to do the sketch for it. But have you ever seen a pant hem where you have the nice curve in the front so this is your front of your hem. You have a curve that goes up and down. And you're like, how did they get that cool hem there? There could be buttons on each side. There might be little straps. I'm going to show you how to do that hem. So I have two hemming classes coming up in July. And if you go to AngelaWolf.com and also BrotherSews.com, I have both websites listed below. Their blog is up. So if you're looking for some great projects, uh, all of that is on their blog. They have the Brother Sews and Brother Craft blog. So if you're using the Scan and Cut, you might want to check out the craft side. And also, don't forget the free design of the month. July is coming up in a couple days. All right, let me just check that you have any more questions before I let you go. This has been a lot of fun. Oh, hi, Marty. Great to see you. And you're welcome. Thanks, Josie. Thanks, Cheryl. I'm so glad to hear you like my tip. I know. You know, Mary, it's funny. I was thinking green might be a bit much for this jacket, but for summer, I think it's going to be fabulous. And it's lightweight. Josie, you are like in all my classes. You are awesome. <laughs> You're welcome, Mary. All right. Anything else? Yes. The iron shoe is really, a, and you'll find when they're not very expensive, call your brother dealer and see if they have some. Uh, because it just attaches to the bottom of your iron. It's usually, they have paper ones. I'm not really a fan of the paper ones, just to be honest. I like the, mine's metal. Cindy, on the iron, is the steam noise automatic or are you pushing a button to release the steam? So I'm pushing a button to release the steam, but you're hearing the motor because uh, it's a whole ironing system. So that's actually um, where the ironing board pushes my fabric I can't remember if I have it where it pushes the fabric up or down, but it does one or the other. It does both, actually, but I don't know which one I have it set at. All right, anybody else? Oh, hey, Marlene, if you message me, I can help you with that iron because it's not a brother product, but just send me a message and I can give you a link to that. All right, anything else? What is the name of your iron? Hey, Marlene, message me. Just go to Angela Wolf. Um, my Facebook page, which is Angela Wolf. I think you have to look up Angela Wolf Couture. Or just go to AngelaWolf.com. If you scroll down a little bit, you click on Facebook. Can't miss it. And don't forget tomorrow, we're going to finish this jacket, and it'll be on my YouTube or my Facebook page. So be sure to go over there. Thanks, Audrey. <laughs> Thank you, Dolores. You guys are fabulous. All right, so we are finished for today. I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. So don't forget the schedule for the week. This afternoon, Cindy Hogan will be having software shut-in, and that is at 4.30 Eastern Standard Time. Tomorrow at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my page, which will be shared on Brothers as well. Uh, we'll be trying to finish up this Chloe Trunch. Fingers crossed. And then Thursday at noon, we have a brother educator. And uh, 
Emily is off on vacation for a few weeks, so uh, you won't find her show at 3 p.m. for the next few weeks. I'm dying. Have you been following her? I'm dying to see the outfits. She made 13 outfits, so I just cannot wait to see how this, <laughs> how it turned out. Oh, thanks, Carol. Nice to see you, Glenda. And I'm so glad you guys got a lot of tips out of this class. Brother, thank you for letting me take over your page. This has been a lot of fun. And I love the projector part because I could totally see my stitches before I sewed them, which is always a bonus. So again, if you always have questions for us, just leave them in the comments or you can message me on Facebook. I usually reply like within a day or so. <laughs> All right, bye everyone. Have a wonderful day.